mm, late 90s gateway computers and this select model which is run on Athlon 850 megahertz processor is, I don't know, I just think this might be actually the pinnacle of 90s computer systems basically uh, right around the turn of the century and uh, it is a beautiful system this gateway select tower and uh, it was about uh, came out about the time I started college and there's just no way I could afford this um, and I've kind of longed after it uh, for quite some time and I found it on eBay for just 99 bucks snatched it up and uh, really not in terrible shape a little dusty some scuff marks a bit of discoloration but nothing I couldn't handle and so uh, I went about the process of restoring it hopefully to its more or less original condition of course I did add some lights as you can see here but um, yeah otherwise uh, just kind of doing some minor upgrades and cleaning this thing up so I thought I'd share that with you uh, this journey here with computer I call the gateway. Now the first thing I need to do was uh, get out my dust blower here, my leaf blower actually, and just blow out about 20 years worth of dust. Which actually was pretty fun and pretty satisfying. Um, you may have actually seen this video, I released a little bit of this uh, not too long ago. Um, I also did eventually take off the uh, little fan CPU cover uh, diverter and uh, man there was a lot of dust in there uh, that I did not get with the leaf blower. Next up, uh, just get out the alcohol wipes and just wiped everything down. Be really careful not to uh, cut myself on any of these sharp raw metal edges they typically had during this era. And I did end up taking out the cards as well, as I'll show a little later, and cleaning them again. But it's just amazing the amount of dust and grime that develops over time. Probably can't tell that well, but the front panel as well as some of these bay covers were uh, noticeably yellowed. Um, and uh, so I wanted to take those off and retro bright those. But of course, first thing you need to do is uh, kind of take things apart and clean it as best as you can and this has actually a really neat front panel where that uh, front piece uh, just kind of pops out and the uh, five and a quarter inch bay drives also pop out pretty easily i like the mechanism that they use and from there it was just a matter of again getting out the alcohol wipes and wiping everything down make sure it's nice and clean and ready for retro riding now there were a few scuff marks that I uh, really had to use some elbow grease and some melamine foam, uh, basically the magic eraser, uh, but that worked really well and got rid of just about everything. So I got myself a bowl here, uh, some 3% hydrogen peroxide for the retro bright and uh, decided just, just to make a little bath for these components, that front piece and the drive bay covers and Oh man, yeah, ran into a problem here, and that is that front piece simply would not submerge. It really liked to float. Uh, so ultimately what I decided to do was uh, use a trick that I've used before in retro writing uh, keyboard keys, and that is basically making a little water bed, filling a plastic bag, and then putting the component inside that bag uh, in the tray and putting it outside. It turns out that the most yellow part of the entire uh, computer is actually the DVD and well that's just really hard to retro bright so actually uh, a few months back found this new inbox new old stock DVD drive uh, apparently could have had Best Buy install it I don't think I need them this time but uh, yeah I mean, new old stock is really satisfying so I decided just to go ahead and put this new one in there and Thankfully, the white color is actually perfect uh, for this computer. Works really well with the case, blends in just, just great. Um, you can see that even better when I hold up uh, the front of the case here. And uh, the, the difference is pretty striking between the old and the new DVD drive. Now I just need to get the old DVD drive out and get the new one in. 
no assistance from Best Buy needed this time. Yeah, I mean, just look at the difference. So I'm not sure if that's yellowing or if it was just a beige DVD drive, but it did not look good, did not fit in. Yeah, that's just perfect. Now it was at this point that I decided to go ahead and turn it on for the very first time, and it's a good thing I did because, just listen. At first I thought it was the power supply, but it actually turned out to be mainly the hard drive making all that racket. So I decided to replace it with a compact flash card and adapter to make it work. Really neat little system. Uh, the fan, in, the rear fan was also a little noisy, so I decided just to replace that with a Fantex fan that I had laying around. It was actually part of a CPU cooler that I had, and just used the uh, plastic screws in the back. It worked just fine. Since I don't need the hard drive, I just went ahead and take, took the uh, whole caddy out and to open up some uh, space and some airflow. And I ended up going with this 32 gigabyte uh, flash card, again for the hard drive, really easy to hook up. I just have to hook in the power supply here and the ID cable, and then find just an open uh, slot. It doesn't even need to go into a PCI slot, it just needs space to go in there. And then hook up the power. If I could figure out how to use Molex cables, And uh, you can just kind of remove your hard drive from the back. You know, it weighs like a gram. Uh, quite portable, very nice. Ah, uh, the sweet sound of mostly silence. Makes a huge difference, much, much better. Next up, I went on to install Windows 98, of course. It's the proper uh, operating system for this machine. Uh, everything seemed to be going well until I took a look at the hard drive specs, and yeah, FAT16 must have uh, limited this to 2 gigabytes, which is no good. So on I went uh, with a boot disk and uh, into F disk in order to format the hard drive and I reconfigure that partition to hopefully see all 30 or so gigabytes of that flash drive. Sadly, uh, that didn't actually work. Uh, that was limited to 8 gigabytes. So I think it was a motherboard issue. I did some searching and found that you might be able to get around that using uh, a card like this. So it just goes into a PCI slot, has a couple ID sockets on it. So I hooked everything back up, ran F disk once again, uh, formatting the hard drive, creating a new partition. There was finally success. Hello. All right, so it finally sees all 30 gigabytes. Now, unfortunately, uh, Win actually let me boot with, uh, with it hooked up to this card. So I ended up putting it back on the motherboard. And, you know, all is well, though, because it actually kept seeing the 30 gigabytes, even though it wasn't uh, run through this card anymore. Just to make sure, though, and to prove that, yeah, it was seeing all 30 so gigabytes of space on this drive. Go back into Windows 98. I think I installed window, installing Windows 98 like five times during this whole process, but uh, hopefully it's worth it. Uh, did eventually see well, at least very close to all 30 gigabytes. Now, as far as the video card goes, I decided to keep that and the sound card because I've got pretty decent. Uh, NVIDIA TNT card here, 32 megabytes. A pretty decent AGP card for the time. Uh, the sound card, nothing too special to Sound Blaster Live. Uh, PCI card, uh, works fine though, good compatibility. And again, I might upgrade both of these at some point uh, in the future, but uh, I think they'll do just fine for now. To add a bit of modern flair to this case, uh, I went on Amazon and got myself this neat little uh, couple LED strips and it just plugs into a Molex cable, power cable here, and actually you can piggyback as well so you can just connect them together. Um, they also have these little magnets on the back so you just kind of put them where you want them and as long as your case is metal they will uh, stay attached. So 
Um, luckily, I had these uh, holes in the front that were just perfectly sized. So I just took the LED strips and poked them through those holes, hooked everything up, and you have light. And the front of this case seems to be uh, almost like it's just made uh, for this kind of lighting effect. So that little front panel uh, doesn't completely close out that front space, allows some airflow through there, and uh, allows light out as well. And I just think uh, it looks kind of, uh, kind of sharp. And I'll wrap things up here with a demo of a little indie game back in 1999 you may have heard of, uh, Quake 3 Arena. Yeah, oh man, I played the heck out of this game in college, land parties, had all kinds of fun, and certainly wish I had had a system like this to run it on. I ended up getting by with something about half as powerful, so this is kind of a, you know, an adolescent uh, college-age dream come true. Thank <laughs> you.